is what I'm waiting for So can you hold me tight, can you keep me warm? Cause Christmas is coming Yes, Christmas is coming And my love is ready right now And the snow is falling Cause Christmas is coming right now To our channel if you guys are new here please stop what you're doing and subscribe because we would love to have you if you're not new then um, this looks pretty regular to you we have decided to bring back Sunday dinners we've been doing Sunday dinners for so freaking long it's basically where everyone comes together it's like old school like your auntie and grandma used to do everyone comes together on Sunday I cook I've been putting my foot in it okay and then everyone comes later and we eat and we grow up and it's a whole thing so i'm really excited to be bringing sunday dinners back for you guys we've got a lot of comments on what are y'all cooking this week so this is what we got so everything looks like a crazy smorgasbord right now because i've been trying to prep as much as possible so you guys don't have to see me like grating an entire bowl of cheese but we're doing mac and cheese that will freaking knock your socks off y'all let me just say something i can admit i wasn't the best at mac and cheese at one point in my life but i've mastered it and you guys have to have this recipe so that's what we're doing as a side we're also doing my um, cornbread casserole it's really good i'm omitting the whole kernels of corn i like it but everyone doesn't like it so if you guys want to add that in you can i'll tell you the whole recipe later also you guys can go to thesantsfamily.com for the full detailed list of everything that's going on here the recipe the ingredients the how-to, all that jazz. And then I'm also doing the most exciting part is, okay, how do I explain it? I wanted to come up with a really cute title for this chicken. It's pineapple jack honey glazed jerk chicken. So it's jerk chicken with a little bit of this, some molasses, some butter, some beef stock, some honey, y'all. It's just stay tuned. If you're interested, just Stay tuned. All right, you guys, so let's just dive right into it. So I forgot to mention that I added some shrimp in the mix with the chicken, and I'm very excited about it. So work with gloves today. If you guys don't know, I'm pregnant. I need a chicken. And um, everything smells odd to me. This is my third pregnancy, and this one just is hitting me like no other. Like everything just has a heightened sense of smell. So I'm working with gloves because we're working with some very strong flavors and it doesn't matter as many times you wash your hands, it's gonna smell like that on my hands and like can't do it throughout the day. So I already marinated an entire batch of chicken just so you can see what it's gonna end up looking like. But I have this one that's undone so we can work through it together. So if you wanna come a little closer, you guys can see what I'm working with. So this is a shrimp. Take a look right there. Come on, y'all. Come on. It's been a minute, but I've still been cooking. Okay, it's been a minute since I recorded it, but I've still been cooking, y'all. You know, can can't come through. So these are the marinades that we're working with. This is Walker's Wood Jerk Seasoning. This is mild. Y'all, them Jamaicans can make some spicy. So if it says spicy, it's gonna be spicy. I cannot take spicy. I can't do heartburn. So I got the mild. To me, it's just as good. It's just without as much spice because it still has some heat to it. So this is gonna be like our like liquid marinade. And I'm working with this jerk seasoning. Now, oh, I got this maybe like a few weeks ago and I got it at a specific HEB. It was like one of those giant like marketplace HEBs. And I went back and I couldn't find it. So I don't know what this is called. And it's so good. It's It's got like a sweet nutmeggy jerk taste to it. And that's why I like it. But I got this one too, just in case you guys are looking for what this one's good too but this is more on the savory side i like sweet meats i like anything that has like a good balance of sweet and salty so if you want you know to get this one you can get this one i just don't know what this one's called and i wish i did because this one smacks and i'm so glad i have so much so we're gonna go in wait i gotta get spoon hope that that okay all right i'm back so we're gonna go in and generously season our chicken. I mean generously, y'all. Don't play your family, okay? You need seasoning in your life. All right, we're gonna go in and just season that right there like that, like that. And that's not it, you thought that was it? So one thing I used to not do is massage 
massage my chicken. Gotta get in there. I used to not do that. I used to just kind of like flip it over and then flip back over and put in the, like what? Huh? No, you gotta get in there. So well, this is what I mean. You gotta to turn and twist and you know what I'm saying? Cause you want the juices from when you wash your chicken. Cause you wash your chicken, right? Cause you wash your chicken, right? Wash your chicken. Don't be nasty. So you want all that extra water to kind of break down the dry seasoning and bind it to your chicken, if that makes sense. This cooking chemistry right here. Cooking chemistry with Kendall. I got you, don't worry. So that's the first layer of seasoning. It's gonna look like this. Nothing special. You thought you had enough seasoning, but this is why you, uh, you massage it. You're gonna flip it over on the underside and you're going to season some more. If you have to be light on the salt, totally get it, but this recipe's not really gonna be for you. Cause I mean, I could, maybe I could do like a low sodium jerk situation. This isn't very salty. These have a lot of spices in them, but this does, this one does have some uh, salt and like brown sugar. So I just flipped it over right there like that. And take the spoon, get another one. I'm gonna have measurements on the site, just so you know, so you guys don't have to keep up. By the time you get to this video, you can just click it, have the tab over like that, and you can follow through just like that. But over here, we measure with our hearts, but I, I'm a great eyeball. And it's funny because I'm self-taught. I, I always say I'm husband-taught because I used to not be able to cook, y'all. And Tex was like, he's called my chicken bubblegum because it was so chewy and dry and it was so nasty. And that's honestly how I learned. Of course, I see my grandma cooking in the kitchen when I was younger, but those were the basics of how to chop and not cut your fingers off. But the flavor came from my husband, you know? So I'm just gonna add some more like that. And then I'm gonna massage it again. Get it all in there. I'm not gonna do any like salt, pepper, garlic. I'm not doing garlic because I don't know what to talk about, but I'm gonna talk about it. Tex and I got sick with the, you know what I'm saying? And um, lost our smell. Got it back. And then like months later, got parosmia, which is, if. If you're not new to this channel, I talk about this like every vegan video because it's so depressing. It just, it's a smell distortion thing. It's like your olfactory nerves have to reconnect and do a thing and there's literally nothing you can do about it. It just has to do its thing. So that's why I'm not doing garlic because gar garlic and onion is like the biggest trigger for me. It used to be meat, but things are progressing. So I'm actually very excited about this. <clears throat> so now that that's all massaged in, the chicken's looking pretty seasoned. There are some bare spots, so. I just want to be very, y'all hear KK? She's upstairs with Daddy and Dita. Um, I just want to be very generous with the seasoning because you want to get it while it's at this stage. I don't want to put the wet stuff on it and then go in and re-season because like seasoning the wet, mm -mm, I'm not doing that. Okay, this looks great. So I'm going to flip them over on their bellies and we're going to go in with our jerk paste is what I call it, but it's not a jerk paste, which goes. This is jerk seasoning, but it's wet. So I already used half of this for the first package of thighs. I'm probably gonna use the whole thing next. I'm not using any oil also because um, when I'm marinating, oil doesn't really like penetrate the meat. It kind of sits on top. So I need the seasoning to penetrate it first. Then when I go in to cook it, I'll uh, put some like pads of butter or you could use like avocado oil or you know whatever y'all like to cook with in your house you could totally customize but i like butter we like butter okay so i'm just gonna start with like three dollops and you go get messy with it and this is why we use gloves because this stuff is strong if you look at the ingredient list whoo, it'll knock you out baby it'll knock you out and no matter how many times you wash your hands you touch your eyeball it's over so i'm just gonna massage this massage it add as much as you need I was really going for color. Like you could stop here and it's good, but I want that like blackened, seasoned look to the chicken. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just gonna keep flipping it over and adding as much as I need. I'm gonna do that and then I'll catch you guys as soon as it's done and I'll show you everything else. All right, you guys, a quick little disclaimer. Um, you probably seen me go in and out of this jar. I just wanna make it known. Um, I'm only using this for, the, for this chicken and then it's getting tossed. So, I mean, that looks really like nasty, like I'm cross-contaminating, but I swear I'm not, guys. You can trust Kitty Cam. 
So we're about done with this container. I do want to use it up just because when the juices start flowing, you're going to lose a little bit of that seasoning. And I still want it to, I want to retain all that flavor. So but I think we're about done here. Add a little bit more. And then we're going to let those sit for a little bit. That looks so good. Like, when you let your chicken marinate, so I let mine marinate for a little over a day, like a night and a day, but my grandpa has this recipe for, he calls it daddy fried chicken. And y'all, 72 hours minimum. <laughs> like, and you taste it because you're letting all the salt and all the seasonings get to the bone of that chicken and it really, really makes a difference. Like he doesn't believe in having just chicken just sitting there. Like, no, you're not gonna have your chicken just sitting there. You, you, your chicken need to be worked on, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna let this sit. Did y'all see my shrimp? I think you saw my shrimp earlier. My shrimp is good. I got the whole shrimp, fresh shrimp, jumbo, Texas wild caught, all that good stuff. Had to devein these bad boys, keep it clean. Very excited about that. So this is actually gonna be baked. Normally jerk chicken would be grilled. We're not gonna grill. We're gonna bake it. I'm not, I'm gonna be grilling it. Okay, moving on. Okay, so I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video that we're gonna do a green as one of our sides because you gotta have a well-rounded, balanced meal. So I'm doing, let's just count the ingredients. I always say three, but it's like one, two, three, four. Four and a half ingredient green beans. I love these because it's so simple. You can add smoked turkey necks or smoked ham hocks, pork hocks, whatever you wanna call them in there, but um, we're not gonna do that today. So, all I'm doing, I'm seasoning it over here and then I'm gonna uh, start cooking it over there. So you're gonna fill it with like a little bit of water, um, but this is how you're gonna season it. Lowry's. This is a seasoning you cannot escape. Two seasonings I feel that everyone should have in their pantry. One is Cavender's. Um, it's, it's like from a boot store. It's, it's like a Texas thing. So it's a Greek seasoning, but it comes from Cavender's, which is so strange because it's a Greek seasoning. I don't know, but I found this out because it's always been in my family. And then when I couldn't find it, I was Googling it and I was like, where the heck do I get this freaking seasoning? And it was the boot store. So strange, but you need that. Um, then I'm gonna do um, some Lari's. You need it, you can't get away from it. It's just something about it, like, yeah. And this is kind of like, I don't wanna say it's kind of like seasonal. It's, seasonal is like a wannabe Lowry's. But you gotta have Lowry's. So I'm gonna be a little generous with it, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm making a lot of green beans. We got two packages of these bad boys. We got a lot of people coming. We don't have a lot of people coming. We got a lot of big people coming. You know, like big boys. So we're gonna season it. You need this. This is not my favorite hot sauce. This is my like fourth favorite hot sauce, but we always keep this because it comes in these big freaking containers and it's always available. The one I like is never available. It's called Red Devil. You can get it online, you can get it on Amazon, but I'm like so weird about getting seasonings and stuff on Amazon because I feel like someone's back there ripping it off and like injecting it with a poison and sending it to my house. So I just do this one, but it's called Red Devil if you're interested. Red Devil will change your life. And it's it's not hot at all. Cause y'all know I can't do spicy. It's not hot, it's amazing. It's like, mm, I, wish I, I wish I had it. It's really, really small though, it's like this. But it's so freaking good. Can someone get it and try it and just comment down below? So I'm gonna do some generous dashes. I've learned this working in um, in a restaurant that that's how you get the hot sauce out so you don't have to shake it. So the reason I'm seasoning this so heavily is because once this batch of green beans is done, I'm gonna take it and put it in where it needs to go and then add another one to the broth, the water. So it's gonna continue seasoning it. Next, I'm gonna add some olive oil, some good stuff. Do you guys know that they have a um, olive oil competition? Like an award for olive oil? Yeah, I'm gonna get the first top three winners. Um, I'm gonna gift that to my aunt for Christmas because she's like a culinary artist and a chef and she loves all that stuff. So. I'm saving this butter for when they're more cooked down because the butter is just going to add that flavor. Like, y'all know what butter does. And then I'm bringing this over here and add some water. You can use water or broth. It's really up to you. I love this thing. This thing is awesome. I freaking love it. Like, when we buy your bill, need it. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and add that because I don't want my green beans to burn. Because I've burned a lot of green beans. I really have, and it sucks. And you get to it when like the bottoms burn, so like all the water's been burned, and it's like soaking the burn flavor soaking throughout all the green beans, and it really sucks. Alright, so about that much. Then I'm going to and let it start. There we go. Let it start broiling. And then we can move stuff around, make some room in the pot. But let it do its thing. You really don't have to touch it. You just gotta move it around, shake it around a little bit. Okay, so that's that. Now we can start working on our mac and cheese. These are the new ones that I'm using and very excited about it. These are Kavatapi number 87s. I didn't know the pastas. Wow, had numbers. But these are like a fancy elbow. But like an elevated elbow. I didn't want to use elbows. Elbows, it's classic, it's mac and cheese, it is what it is, everybody uses it. But I wanted something that was giving steakhouse. You know, like when you go to a steakhouse with your man, you know, or you take your girl out, you know? Or you're with your grandma for her birthday party, they have the mac and cheese that's like, and they be using a different noodle, this is the noodle. So it's like a spiral, but it gets really thick. It's just an interesting and more interesting noodle. So I'm gonna use that. I got three, but you don't need three. You're probably just gonna use two. That's not that many people come in. And I'm gonna use this aluminum pan to put all the noodles in. But I wanted to show you guys my noodles. Very excited about that. And then I'm gonna show you how to make the world's best mac and cheese. There's a secret ingredient. Now when I tell you the secret ingredient, please don't judge me. Please don't. This is tried and true and you need it. And it's okay to use this ingredient as long as you have the bowl of real cheese. So I'm pretty sure you know what it was, but um, give me a second to clean up. Okay, so I've reorganized and I'm going to tell you. Secret ingredient. <laughs> it's Velveeta, don't kill me, don't kill me. Please do not come for me. <laughs> it's okay, it's fine if you do. But I can explain, please allow me to explain. Y'all hear that sizzling, crack, crackling, popping? That's some great beans. All right, let me explain. You can use Velveeta for the creamiest mac and cheese because this is my issue with people's mac and cheese. Every time I see, you know, the uh, cheese pulls and when you take the spoon, you cut into it and it's, it's underwhelming. You know why? Because you're not using egg in the mac and cheese. So it's curdling and everything is separating. I like a mac and cheese where the cheese is bound to the, like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that. But even that's a little too creamy. That's why you have this though. You need a balance, you know? So, I, I could just read the comments right now. I feel the cut, like, oh my gosh, this is probably not so nasty. It really makes a difference. And just stick with me, okay? Like, don't click out, just stick with me. So on top of the Velveeta, we're using like, maybe like six different cheeses. I'm gonna have it all on the recipe list, but I think we did, it's all in here, that's why. I did white cheddar, mild cheddar, American, sharp cheddar, Colby Monterey, it was like combined. And then this is medium cheddar. I may or may not use this, um, just because we have so much freaking cheese already. And then we're also gonna um, use I just need to keep it out and finish out because I don't want to mark green beans, but we're good so far. <laughs> then we're also going to use Philadelphia cream cheese, but the key is it has to be whipped. Nobody wants to be fighting with that cream cheese, um, and this way you don't have to let it sit out. We're also going to use our heavy whipping cream and a little bit of butter, but the butter's going to come later because if you use the butter on hot, fresh noodles, the cheese is not going to combine with the, it's a whole thing, you know, the cooking time, like I told you. So I have some water boiling right there. I put a generous amount of salt, maybe like a tablespoon of, um, this is coarse sea salt. It's what I have, use what you want. But I'm gonna chop up some Velveeta. I like to do it slowly. And then I'm gonna put it in my pot right here. And as that's cooking down, then you're gonna um, liquefy it a little bit, like thin it out a little bit with the heavy whipping cream. And then you're gonna uh, kind of like fold in the Philadelphia. And then, that's it, yeah. There's so much going on in here. Just wanna make sure I'm telling you the right thing, yeah. So these are the only things that you need right now, which is the heavy whipped cream, Philadelphia cream cheese, and the Velveeta. And it's gonna make it so freaking creamy. And then the rest of those cheeses that I uh, grated over there, it took me a very long time, I'll have you know. 
the rest of those. It's just to add like a real cheese flavor um, that kind of cuts through the creaminess of that real beater. Cause I like a nice, you know, shortage more of flavors. So in order for the Velveeta to uh, melt down easily, learned this the hard way. I just threw the whole stick in there one time. And then like the bottom burned. Oh, so upset, ruined the whole mac and cheese. Everyone was pissed. But this is what I'm saying. It took me a lot of trial and error to get to this point of the perfect mac and cheese. Okay, just stick with me. So I'm gonna cut it into these size cubes and then put it on low. Low, get low, get low, get low, get low. Put it on low, you don't want it on medium, I promise. And then consistently stir it. But you want this to melt before you add the heavy whipping cream. It's a whole thing, just stick with me. I got you, girl. I like to think that I make the cooking videos for the people who don't know how to cook because I did not know how to cook. So I'm gonna use about two, thirds of this. Who am I kidding? I'm gonna use the whole thing. No, no, two thirds. Go in with two thirds of Alvina, but honestly, if you use the whole thing, it's totally fine. Um, I'm only using two packages of noodles, so I just don't feel that I need that much. So I'm gonna go ahead and cube this up, and then I'll show you guys it melting and us mixing everything else. This whole dinner so freaking easy it's just all about prep i hate shredding and grating cheese don't we all but it is so worth it because i don't like when people play with mac and cheese it's so annoying and i've always wanted the perfect mac and cheese and so when i did this recipe i was like i got it and i don't want to be selfish so i want you guys to have it too bring this to your what's coming up christmas christmas parties your man is gonna be like who taught you how to do this and you're gonna say, Kindle, my real Kindle, because I got you. Anyways, I'm gonna finish chopping this up and then I'll show you guys the rest. All right, you guys, so I have the Velveeta melting over there. I'm gonna keep checking it because you do not wanna burn your freaking Velveeta. Trust me, it's really not fun. But once that gets going, I'll show you guys um, the next steps and so on and so forth. But I do wanna get started on my, this was gonna be a Hennessy glaze, but this is what we have. And this is Jack Daniels, Tennessee whiskey. Which is totally fine. I mean, it's totally fine. This actually might be better because this has like a honey thing to it. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. It smells just like honey. So, you just want that kick. Yes, y'all. I'm pregnant. It's gonna cook down. I'm not just gonna be knocking back a bottle of Jack Daniels. Okay, so just stick with me. Bear with me. Wait. Okay, so let me explain what we need. So, we need some of this. Again, I'll have all the measurements down, but I measure with my heart. Okay, we're not using a lot. We're not using a lot, so it's, it's safe. Um, it's family friendly. Then we're gonna use a little bit of sea salt just to balance everything out. We're using um, sweet salted creamed butter. I've never used, hold on, check my baby. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you get to, you know, get the moving, you gotta move it around so you don't tear it up. That's what my grandpa says, tear it up. Can't have nothing. So I always use salted butter. If you are on some dietary restriction, I totally get it, but my cooking videos probably won't be for you because I always use salted butter. I just don't see the point other than dietary restrictions for why you would need unsalted butter. I don't, I, I haven't cracked that code yet. So you're gonna need some sweet cream salted butter, just salted butter. Um, some molasses, oh, molasses and Jamaican recipe. Come on, oh my God, I do this. And it makes me so freaking happy because I'm passionate about it. Molasses, some uh, honey, I'm using local raw Texas honey. And this is the secret ingredient. These are diced, no, crushed pineapples. I said diced pineapples because that's one of our best sellers at KinCare. KinCare.com, diced pineapples. Get the bundle, it'll change your life. Cece's been sleep for so long. Like so long. I didn't go check on my baby. I think she's good though, she needs to sleep for a while. So that's what she needs. I'm gonna start with using half a stick of butter. Let me put that in there. Hold on, let me move my stuff. Part of the Red Sea so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna use half stick butter. Then you are also going to use your molasses. So we don't need a lot of this, but you should need a little. You need a good amount. This will equate to about a tablespoon. Now it is. Yep, it's a tablespoon. All right, we're gonna use a tablespoon of that. We're gonna use some of our Honey, tablespoon, boom. 
Um, what else did I say we needed? Some sea salt. Balance it out. You have to balance the flavors out. Whenever you're using this much sugar, you should a little bit. Not even, tea, uh, not even a teaspoon. This is like a pinch. Boop. A little pinch. Um, I'm going to add the keep wanting to call this Hennessy because it says Tennessee. It's funny. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna use the Jack Daniels at the very end, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pour the juice of oh wait, pour the juice of these um, what you call it's in here. What is it called? The crushed pineapples. It's okay if you get a little bit in there because we're gonna end up adding everything, but I just want to start with the juice so those flavors can really combine, and then. We gonna add the rest of it once we add this. So let's go ahead and get this on the stove. We have to move some things around here. We got a lot going on. Oh, oh Jesus, Lord, baby, did you see it? That made me nervous. Okay, we're gonna put it on low um, and just let that do its thing and let it melt out and combine. Um, I forgot to tell you guys we also need brown sugar. We need brown sugar, but that's okay to add towards the end because you don't want it to harden and start caramelizing. So now we're gonna work a little bit fast because we got multiple things on the stove. So you're gonna need to keep tossing and turning this. And then maybe as the chunks get more creamy, I'm gonna start adding the heavy whipping cream. My pot of boiling water is ready for my cava toppy, my steakhouse noodles. I'm so excited about these. So it says uh, six minutes for al dente. Uh, you definitely want al dente, you do not want these because we're gonna end up putting the mac and cheese in the oven. So don't be doing too much. Y'all don't mess it up. I'm giving y'all the keys, you know? All right, so add all that. And you do have to stir it around. I'm just gonna stir it around with a half. You have to stir it around. You don't want a big old lump of noodles. Hold on, I do want to check that because that, that was gonna be good. Hello. Uh oh, you dropped the boopa. Good morning. Hi, you had such a good nap. Hello. Tess. Oh, see, see the. Say hi, Cynthia. Say hi, Cynthia. So you're gonna take that. And these two, and give them to Daddy. Yeah. 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 Hey, 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 hey. Oh, I'm changing times. I bet. I bet. Uh-huh. Hey. Say good morning, sis. Hey, I said, what's up? She's your mama. She's your mama's ghost, sir, y'all. What y'all, 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 what like, we're trying to really, you know, we haven't got the DNA to blame with you. Here, take her, because we're going to burn all the food on the stove. Oh, she about to cry, y'all. Watch this island. I might bring the TV to the too. The TV? The one that's in the girls' room? Because they don't really watch it. Okay, you're just going to, like, casually bring the TV upstairs? You know. I mean, what? I, I, I want to say, but you know. Come on, girl. Okay. okay. So, we're good here. Just cutting it close, though. We're going to start adding some cream. Heavy cream. Heavy whipping cream. Just add it in small amounts. And I'm going to start thinning that Velveeta out. And then in about... Three minutes, I'm gonna take one of the noodles out and chop it with a fork and see if it's really al dente in six minutes, you know? All right, you guys, this is the exciting part. I put the sauces and everything else on hold because the mac and cheese is ready, so we're gonna get this popping first. So, I have one of the noodles here. I'm probably gonna use one and a half packs because I don't want this to be too layered, too tall. Um, so I'm just gonna make sure it's super flat high high. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So make sure this is super flat. Give us some room to add what we need to add. So first we're going to do our cream cheese, Velveeta, and heavy whipping cream mixture. And what you're going to do is, oh, oh, messy. 
Y'all hear that upstairs? My kids are going in. So you're just gonna layer it like you would like, I don't know, like a banana pudding. You're just gonna layer it, get it in there. You know what I'm saying? You don't wanna be heavy handed. You still have a lot of layers to do. So you just wanna make sure it's coated, but you're not doing too much, you know what I'm saying? This is gonna make it so creamy. And I'm gonna go in and um, mix the bottom layer too. I'm gonna mix it a little bit because I want it to really get in there. Once you do that, we're gonna take our cheese mixture of like five, six cheeses, and then we're going to sprinkle it on the top. And this is why you mix it, because look, that wasn't even nothing what I added in there. But you can add more slow, if you go slowly, but you can't take it away. I always learn that the hard way. So always add it slowly, even if it you feel like it's a waste of time. And you cannot go back. That's with seasoning, that's with salt, that's with sauces, sugar, anything. Start slowly, because you cannot take it back. Okay. I'll do maybe two more ladles. And then that should be good. That's one. Let's do two. Um, I ended up using the entire block of Velveeta, and I'm so glad I did. Because it just wasn't going to be enough. I used the whole jar of the whipped Philly. In case you were wondering but like i said earlier i'm gonna have all the recipe notes all the show notes the quick notes all that stuff on the site oh yeah this looks yo you know that mac and cheese sound like oh, it's so good, so good. that's it that's it okay now that we're done oops now that we're done with that now we're done with that we're gonna add sprinkle our cheese now the first couple sprinkles, maybe like, maybe just like the first layer, I'll mix it in. And then I'm gonna go in and um, layer it. So this is what I mean. So I'm gonna mix that in there because you want it to hit that bottom. You want all that cheese fully incorporated. And then you can go ahead and layer it. But you got to have the cheese in there. It's mac and cheese. It's gonna make it creamy. You're gonna have a little bit of cheese pull. You're gonna have that, you know, that layer of, of cheese on top where you can cut into it. And it's thick and bubbly and hot. Delicious. So all we done on cheeses we use. I'm telling you. Trial and error. That's what it's about for me. Self taught, baby. Okay. So this looks perfect. Now I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top. Just like that. You don't want to do too much, y'all. Just got a lot of cheese going on. I'm probably not going to use this entire bowl of cheese, just in case you're wondering. That is a lot of cheese. But I wanted to shred it all, mix it all, just so I have that option. Because I didn't know how much mac and cheese I was going to have. So I add a little bit more into the corners because I want to make sure it's fully covered. Boom. Come on. So I have my other um, pot of water boiling and I'm gonna add about a half of the jar or the box of kava, what is it called? Kava, kava tapi noodles. Cause I don't need a whole, I might add the whole thing. No, I don't need, it's not that low. I don't need a whole box. So I'm just gonna add a half a box, you know? And let that boil up. And then do the same thing. Now I'm gonna move on to the sauce. I'm gonna clean up, you know how I do. And then I'll catch you guys in like a millisecond. All right, you guys, so a quick little update. I put the entire package of macaroni noodles, cavatelli, cavatelli, kind of, kind of, the noodles, the fancy steakhouse noodles. I just wanna head into the whole box just in case there is enough room to fit in here. I wanna use as much as possible because we like keeping our company full. Then I'm um, starting on the, or I'm finishing up the, pineapple, whatever you want to call it, glaze. I'm gonna have a really cute name for it when you click the link to go to the recipe, but right now it's just like a pineapple, jack, honey, jerk chicken glaze, but it still sounds good. So now I'm gonna work on the cornbread casserole because this takes like no time. Um, we're gonna be doubling the recipe. So I'm using two cans of cream corn, two packages of Jiffy cornbread mix. You don't have to use Jiffy, but y'all, we're cutting a corner, okay? You don't have to slave over the meat. You could cut a quarter, it's okay. You're not gonna know. Cause we doctor everything up in there. That was 
excuse me, that's one of my biggest, um, my grandma's biggest advice to me. She's like, baby, doctor it up, okay? Get yourself a rotisserie chicken that's already made and shred it and use it for tacos. Whatever, uh, whatever you want to use, touch a zini. Like, why would you have to roast the whole chicken yourself? It's done and it's not flawed. So you make it easier on yourself is my point. I need to, um, I guess to use this spoon. Make it easier on yourself, you know? You don't have to, you don't have to be in there just slaving away, you know? So by using the Jiffy, it makes it easier on myself. So you two packages of that. I'm gonna go ahead and crack two eggs. One-handed, cause you know how we do. Okay. Let me stop that, cause that that, that was lucky. So <laughs> let me see if I got this one. Bam. Yeah, no shells. Okay, two eggs. We need two thirds cup of milk. I use whole milk because it's it's like butter to me. Salted butter, like not unsalted. I don't want skim milk in my. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's the chicken. I'm gonna take it out and um, look at it and add some of my broth, my beef broth, and then continue cooking it. One, and a two. Okay. Next, it says we need some oil in here. No, we don't. What am I talking about? We do not need no oil. Yo, we'll mix it up. But because we're doctoring it up and we're actually using it to make our cornbread casserole, you're gonna mix the batter, get it to a nice little liquefied consistency, and then you're going to add sour cream. Um, butter is optional. I'm not gonna add butter because we're working with butter, everything else in this entire smoked pork, so we're not gonna use butter. It's just not really necessary. So I'm gonna do my can of cream style corn. That's literally what it's called. It's just a can of cream style corn. Um, in the past, I've used the whole corn kernels, but I told you guys in the meeting why I'm not doing that. Everybody didn't like it, but this is undetectable. No one's gonna know. So for this, you can use two cans if you want to double the recipe. It's a very wet recipe. So I'm really only gonna use like one and some change, possibly even one and some change. You know, you don't need that much. Um, but I've done two and it's been perfectly fine. It's just the more you use, the more you liquefy the recipe, the more like cake batter it's gonna be. It's gonna be really dense. It's gonna be cakey. Um, then you, oh, you put it with some honey butter on top. Dang. You can't go wrong, it's so easy. Then we're just gonna add, I'm gonna have the recipes for you, but I'm gonna use about a cup, boom, of sour cream. And I thought I needed two of these, but I might not. So I'm gonna use the one that I wanted to use, which was my little pie tin. Some of them are smoking. Wait a minute, y'all. I'm gonna turn this heat off. We won't smoke, we get <laughs> So I'm just gonna mix this up. And then you can butter your pan, or you can spray your pan with oil, or you can leave it and it'll be just fine. And I'm probably just gonna leave it. But I've seen people butter it. If you butter your pan, the bottom of it is gonna be like, it's gonna brown quicker and it's gonna be crispy. Some people like those crusty bits. I don't. I like cornbread to be sweet like honey and we're from the south, okay? It needs to be like a little bit cakey. So, this is good. This looks great. Some people add brown sugar to it. There's a million ways you can dress this up or dress it down, just keep it the same, but you gotta dress your cornbread. Come on. Even if it's from scratch, you gotta add something special, you know, to make it more than just cornbread. Whether it's like the, the glaze that you add on top, you gotta make it, you gotta add a little bit of specialty, a little bit of spice in there. So I'm just going to boop, add that in there. I'm gonna spread it across. You don't wanna overcrowd your pan because you gotta leave some room for this to rise. But, this is not enough for a whole nother pan, so we go, we can make it work. Yeah, we can make this work. And this, uh, the cream corn actually has a little bit of uh, whole corn kernels in there. So you still kind of get the effect. But if I were going all out, man, we would have the cream corn kernels, the can of 
whole core, core, uh, core kernels. We have some honey butter glaze, some brown sugar. You know, I add molasses and brown sugar to everything. But this is just a very simple cornbread casserole just to complement everything else we have going on. So this is ready. We're gonna let this sit. We have two ovens, so I'm gonna um, preheat the bottom one. And then that's my kids, y'all. I'm gonna preheat the bottom one to 400 and then put this on the bottom rack and let it do its thing. If you wanted to, you could take your honey and drizzle it over it. It's like I said, it's so customizable. So let me check on everything else and then I'll come back to you. They hungry. So I'm gonna grab some. She want that bottle, she wants some food, food. She grown now, I'm trying to tell you. All right, y'all, so this here is the property. Um, it's about five acres back here. Not that much, but it's cool, you know what I'm saying? We got um two little ponds back there. Got a zip line coming from that uh, tree house over there. This is where the horses hang out 90% of the time because that's where the food is. Um, when they run out of hay, if it takes me like a couple days to get them another bill, they will graze, they, they would they be all over everywhere eating this grass to his ball here, okay? But, but yeah, man, me and Caleb hang out here a lot. We just be out here fishing, chilling. KK be out here trying to fish too, but she be, she be wilding. You know what I'm saying? She be like, I can't even explain what she be doing. But fishing with KK is different. You ain't gonna really get the fish. She wanna take your pole and slap the water with it and, you know, when she get older, maybe we can vibe out and fish. But, um, yeah, we be, we, we be out here a lot, man. You wanna, you wanna swing? I think I can wanna swing. You ready? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna have to hop over this. I'm coming over. Okay. Yeah. What? What is that bit out here? Let me tell you, let me tell you. Let's see that down there? Huh? Country Boy Earl. This is the kind of stuff you do. Y'all see this? He put it on here. Country Boy Earl. You see that? He put it on here. Wanna make one for your sister? He's lazy. Oh, Smokey. Oh, he gonna get dirty. He gonna get on y'all. You ready? He came my phone the boob. Yeah! Sketchy will do it. Oh God, Smokey's coming. Smokey, no! Smokey, no! Oh my God! Smokey! Smokey! Don't hit him! Why would you push off? I didn't know. Y'all want CC? No. I got room for one more? No! I have to hold you. CC? Oh wait. No, I can't hold it. I got a swing. KK. Ah. Four seats. All right, y'all. I want y'all to meet Hercules. And I want y'all to meet Canelo. Okay, they looking rough. They need a bath. Been about a week since they took a shower. For some reason, they love rolling in the dirt, okay? Um, they need a good shower and a good brush. But Hercules and Canela. Canela is Country Boy Earl's horse. Hercules is my horse. Um, had him for a while now, okay? I kept him boarded somewhere in um, Conroe, if y'all know what I said. But now that we have our own property, this is one of, another one of the main reasons why we moved from the other house to this home. You know, it's more of a vibe. We got a lake, horses, all that. Pawns, horses. Smokey! Hey, Smokey. Fight. Fight. Y'all need some training, all right? Fight. Yeah, but, um, what's up? What's up? We'll fun? go riding today, but what's I hate up? that it get, it gets dark at 5 p.m. now, which is, um, what's up? weird. All right, if you really think about it, you saying, what's up? You want to touch horse? Come on. Yeah, it's weird that it get dark at 5, you know what I'm saying? Like, at one point it was getting dark at 10. Um, I feel like the time went back three hours, I don't know what's going on, but right. it's cutting my day in half, I don't like it. But, um, yeah. When horse you want to touch up? Come on. Oh. Canela. Hey, girl. Look, you see these right here, y'all? She be buying on her. They be behind food, man. They be fighting over food. Seen them on two eyes. Bad. We used to have another horse, which was Caleb's horse. Um, it was like a three-year-old horse, so it wasn't really like trained to ride that much. So you could ride it, but it was, I, I would have had to put in the work to train it, and I just ain't got the time. But um, she used to bully his horse 
But now his heart's gone. I guess her bullies. Oh my God, look how mad it is. Here is. Yeah, I think I might come out here for like an hour before it get dark. You guys want to show you the horses? All right, so I wanted to make sure y'all see this, okay? Uh, I need shoes because I don't like walking on the floor. It's like weird, you know, I got socks on. I just feel like they getting dirty. I feel like the floor is dirty. But uh, I want to say this, okay? So if y'all can look at these candles, these candles are called Luxury Barn Candles. This is not a paid sponsorship. This is actually me supporting my brother, Country Boy Earl. You on his way right now, okay? These candles, no cap. And one thing about me is, I will not lie. If I don't like something, I will tell y'all straight up I don't like it, okay? If I love something, I will tell y'all straight up I love it. I love these candles, all right? I never really was big on candles, but I really love these candles. Make sure y'all go to luxurybarncandles.com. Check it out, you know what I'm saying? But um, these are the Christmas ones, okay? He is a growing, small growing company, okay? Um, it would be greatly appreciated if y'all took time just to go check out the website. Y'all don't have to buy nothing, but if y'all want some, go ahead and buy some. Um, he got really good prices and he ships pretty fast. Okay, so make sure y'all go to luxurybarncounters.com, check him out. Check him out. I'm actually about to like this one right now. This is marshmallows. I had this lit all day. That's how I put blow the candle. I don't know. My wife's seen that probably been in trouble. Okay. So yeah, make sure y'all go check him out. I'm about to like this one right here. Yes, it was. No. Oh, are you joking? So we, I mean, it's, it's the first day Sunday back. We, we're gonna we're gonna drink out of soda cans like we're the barbecue. No, Let's go. We, we, we three wine go. glasses. Oh, oh, you wanna be boozy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um. All right, somebody grab a case of soda. Let's go to the table. Get out. Because as right. you know, I'm the only one that know how to cook right. around here. Besides, let them cook. We cook fried chicken. Cook fried chicken. If fried chicken. If fried. I'm just asking. Calm down. Pick up CC, man. No. That's why she was scared. Cause I was. Oh, yeah. Watch. watch. Oh. Oh. So. So. Hey. so. It's okay. It's not the How do I? Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. Hey. Oh. 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 Hey. Oh, I'm nervous, man. Hmm. Actually, Jamie just said, I knew he was going to try. Because you're the old black grandpa. Everybody know that. No. Say, how do you already got food on your shirt when you even started eating? Oh, my God. All right. Oh, my God. You, you say pray. Say pray, man. It's your house. I'm going to say it. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, wife. Uh, everyone, bow your heads. Close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the blessings you bestowed upon us. We ask that you bless us food for the nourishment of our bodies. We ask you bless those that are not as fortunate as us to be eating as good as us right now. In your name, we praise you. Amen. 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 All right. So hard. Not my fault. She never here when no, I. You ain't never okay, here. Okay, so let me just explain. We have mac and oh, cheese. Oh my god. Um, go to the toilet. I did. <laughs> Man, you just. Okay, look. Go get sushi. Y'all might be from right there on the, the twins. Bar. I ain't never met two people love attention much, y'all. No, on the bar. Yeah, I think he had to go use the restroom so everybody can. What be going on in your head, dog? <laughs> <laughs> I done told you it's a little monkey. <laughs> 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 Bad. I need to go back to school. Nah, you, right. you know how to read? No, you talk about wanting to put me in college. <laughs> <laughs> First class. Dave agrees with everything. No, Texas. no, no matter what. I, I've been there. No matter what. I've been there. Right. No this, matter what. Right. Listen, right. Listen, right. No matter what. Did you expect there to be corn in the cornbread? Oh. Yes. I did not. <laughs> but, but, that's pretty normal. I thought yeah. it was pretty normal. No, it's, it's not. not. You it's, you normal. Normal. No. it's definitely not normal. Both. Both. Way normal. The first yeah, time right. I tasted corn and cornbread, I was normal. like, what, what the hell? It's not normal. Normally, like normally, normally not I'm used to not like corn not being in cornbread, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> my expectations, oh. they were exceeded. I seen it. Oh, yeah. Like, wow. Make sure y'all go to luxurybarncandles.com. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> but y'all can't, all right? Corn popcorn. Be the definition of a corn to y'all, all right? You know, the, you know when, you, when we buy stuff? <laughs> yeah. And it comes with the peanuts? Oh, my God, ninja. He had the box. And he was like, do you need these? Okay. Do you need these? And I was like, no. He was like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh I need mean, you. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. About 16 years ago. Seriously, <laughs> so what did you think? Oh, uh, nah, it was amazing as usual. You know what I'm saying? What did you think, Hank? Did you like it? <laughs> she tore up the green beans. I can speak for her. And this one right here is a food coma. And yeah, she got all the cornbread on me. Honestly, for the first Sunday dinner back in a while, it was good. I wanted to keep it simple. Like I told you guys, I'm gonna have the recipe and all the show notes and everything and a link where you can just go, add a new tab, follow through if you wanna cook with me in this video. It'll be really simple. So 
mac and cheese is bomb. I really want ah. some more, but I don't want to like gorge in front of people. So as soon as we cut, I'm going to eat some more mac and cheese. But we love you guys. I miss you already. Until next Sunday, we'll catch you guys in the next video. We love y'all, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, hit that post notification bell. Um, if y'all got anything that y'all would like my wife to maybe cook next Sunday, let us know down in the comments. Um, and like she said, we love y'all. See y'all next video. Bye! Can you love me more? Wanna love you more? Every year this moment's what I'm waiting for. So can you hold me tight? Can you keep me warm? Cause Christmas is coming. Yes, Christmas is coming. And my love is ready, 